Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's your boy No Name back at it again with another New York Giants update video. This vid, uh, the topic of this vid actually came sometime last night at like 8.30 in the night. Um, I wasn't exactly, it's not exactly like I was heading into bed or anything when I missed it. I was literally just, I was playing some Madden. I was on my computer and I was just, I was just on there. I was on franchise mode. Um, one thing I've been doing, yo, is I've been trying to get the, uh, yeah, the Giants to Super Bowl with the new updated roster, um, you know, downloaded a customizable roster from Community Creations and then trying to get the Giants to the Super Bowl since then. Uh, as of right now, I have not made it to Super Bowl in case any of you guys were wondering. So I just completely missed this last night. But taking care of it now, the Giants have picked up the fifth year options on both tight end Evan Ingram and safety Jabil Preppers, which ensures, oh my God, my throat. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm gonna edit that out which ensures my throat is acting up a bit guys but this technically ensures that they're gonna stay on the team through the 2021 season of course I say technically because that only that's only gonna happen if these guys uh if the coaches and, and the front office actually want them on the seat on the team through the 21 21 season now of course the technicality I just stated applies more so to Ingram than it does Peppers and I'll talk about Ingram first and then get into Peppers later. But uh, for those of you that don't know, NFL teams, they got they have the option to exercise the fifth year option on fourth round draft choices after they play three years in the league. Doesn't have to be necessarily with the team they were drafted with, as in the case with Peppers. And the fifth year option is just an extension of their rookie deal and is fully guaranteed. Doesn't matter if you're injured or not, the player would still get the money should the team keep them on the roster. And the way the salary is broken down is that for the top 10 picks is the transition tender, which is the average of the 10 highest salaries at a player's position when the option is exercised. And then from picks 11 to 32, the fifth year salary is the average of the third through 25th highest salaries at a player's position. Now then, what that means for us is that for Evan Ingram, his tight end salary for that fifth year is going to be $6 million at $6,013,000. But for uh, Jabra Peppers, it's a little bit higher. It's going to be $6,770,000. So both of them right around that $6, $7 million mark. Uh, to be honest with you, that's probably where they're valued at right now. Maybe if Peppers has a nice breakout year in this new system, which I actually think he might, but we'll get to him later, his value could rise. And if Ingram can stay healthy and perform up to his capabilities, his value will definitely rise. So let's get into it right now. So we all know the story about Evan Ingram. 23rd selection in the 2017 draft out of Mississippi, out of Ole Miss, the college that Eli played at. Played three seasons with us, but never played an entire full season. Came into the league as the fastest tight end. I'm not sure if he still holds that title, because George Kill is pretty fast, but he's definitely one of the fastest tight ends in the league right now. Um, came into the league with the potential to be the, you know, the best tight end in the league. You know, in 2017, which was his best year. And that is partially because, you know, of the injuries we faced in 2017 and because Ingram was really Eli's own receiving option. But regardless, in 2017, he had 64 receptions for 722 yards and six touchdowns. His best year by far, you know, even though he missed games that year. 2018, he did miss games again, but it was a decline to 45 receptions, 577 yards and three touchdowns. It was a decline again in 2019 after what seemed like a strong start. The first three games of the year, Ingram was like one of the best tight ends in the league production wise, but he then missed like, how many games did he miss? Yeah, he missed like half of the season. The dude just could not stay healthy. And you know, he ended up with the um, stats of 44 receptions for 467 yards and three touchdowns. So if you look at it, you know, you, you're just looking at his stats. You can see there's a decline each year, but there's also just like an increased missed amount of time each year. So of course, you guys know me. It's no secret that I um I wouldn't be mad if we let Evan Ingram go. In fact, I'm all for the trade Evan Ingram tra uh, trade Evan Ingram trade trade. I keep saying trade Evan Ingram trade instead of trade Evan Ingram train. My mouth just does not want to work today, guys. Bear with me here. But I've been on that train for a while. I made a video on it back in like January or February. Um, I want to I wanna get him out of here, get maybe a third, second round pick out of him. I'm sure there's a team that would give up a third or second. We're not getting a first. To be honest with you, we probably won't get a second. So yeah, I, I, I would be happy to let him go for a third. Uh, I don't know if some team is really desperate, maybe a third and a fifth or something like that. 
but the dude cannot stay healthy right now he does have a saving grace and that is in this year with Jason Garrett as their offensive coordinator and the Air Coryell system at least with what we've seen from Garrett in the past uh tight ends are you know they are a, a key part to this offense and if if Ingram can stay healthy I can guarantee you he's gonna have probably like somewhere between an 800 and 1000 yard season and that that might be enough to keep him on the team if he stays healthy and he produces like that under this system with Garrett. We've seen how Jason uh, Jason uh, Witten has been, you know, used and abused in the Jason Garrett system and kind of uh, been a really he has been the most consistent and main part of that Cowboys offense with Garrett there for the better part of the last 10 years or so. So Evan Ingram has a, a mighty chance of bouncing back this year. It all depends on how healthy he is which is where it all comes down to right so this fifth year option i look at it it's a smart move because should he play through this year is he you know should he stay healthy should he have a nice productive year bam you got him you got him on for the 2021 season maybe you give him an extension but if he doesn't it's smart in the sense that it makes it easier to cut or trade him um i've seen teams do this before where they sign the fifth year option on a guy i mean you know they pick up the fifth year option to the guy and then they trade him very much like the tr uh the franchise tag is used where a team they put the tag on a player and they, they trade him to somebody else that wants him so that's definitely could be in play here now in my opinion i think they put it on him so that they could see how he actually performs and then maybe during the season or sometime next year you know sometime this time next year you know march april of uh 2021 they'll trade evan ingram but um another thing they can do is what the uh texans did with her vernon hargraves back in i think it was 2016 or 2017 they cut uh hargraves in february of that year to avoid his like nine and a half million dollar cap hit from his fifth year salary but then they re-signed him in april to a one year like basically vet minimum one million dollar deal because no other team picked them up and uh he was perfectly fine with going back to the team that cut him i could see that happening with evan ingram i mean not necessarily this year but next year if we don't trade him we could cut him and then sign him back to a cheaper deal a cheaper and shorter deal if no team picks him up that's also in play here uh whatever the case is it's smart because it's um you know it allows you to have a bit more mobility with it than if you would just to let the dude play out his fourth year on the deal and let him walk um because if if there was a trade for evan ingram in this offseason offseason i think it would have happened now wouldn't have been surprised if he went to the browns you know giants and browns have been doing a lot of trades the past couple of years but they also were looking for a tight end and they got their tight end in uh, austin hooper so now on pepper's side of things i pepper's side of course i'm a lot more you know uh safe and stable with you know that's why he's a safety <laughs> get it safe safety all right nobody's laughing i'll just get back to the video then but Drew Burrow Peppers was Cleveland's first round draft choice, one of their three first round draft choices in 2017, the 25th overall selection. So just going like, what is that, like two, four picks after Evan Ingram, don't remember exactly. He was traded to the Giants um, in the Odell Beckham trade. And he was another guy that came into the league with a lot of hype. I'm not sure if Giants fans know this or whatnot, but I, I remember Jabil Peppers coming into the league because I thought, and this was before I started looking into the draft as deep as I do now, but I, I personally thought this guy was going to be like a top 10 pick. I loved him coming out of Michigan. I thought this guy was the best player in the draft. Once again, this was before I you know started looking into it heavily, but Jabil Peppers was the Isaiah Simmons of that 2017 draft. People kind of forget how versatile this guy was he played linebacker he played safety he even played cornerback he played running back for the michigan wolverines he was all over the field and there wasn't another player like him in the draft now of course the best player in that draft was um you know you could argue that it's patrick mahomes deshaun watson uh miles garrett but you know looking at a guy from a versatility standpoint and i guess from a talent perspective jabil peppers was one of the best players coming out of that draft and he hasn't lived up to ex expectations yet now, I don't see the Giants cutting or trading him anytime soon because he's a pretty damn good strong safety for us. It's not exactly like he's been a bad strong safety for us. And in my opinion, he only gets better. The AM system that we're going to start to implement here on the defensive side of things. And with um, Xavier McKinney coming in, I almost called him Isaiah McKinney because McKinney is also a versatile player. Uh, Preppers and McKinney are similar in, in that sense, although Xavier does have better covered skills. But with this system being implemented and with the secondary of the Giants being, you know, a very flexible one with parts that can move around, I expect Jabril Peppers, without a doubt, to have a better year than um, than Evan Ingram. Because one thing is that Peppers is healthier than Ingram. 
and that also at his base play at safety while he's not the greatest he's still really good he's still a top 15 safety in the league he's still one one of the better safeties in the league and with this new system where you could shift him around and possibly using him a little bit like he was used in Michigan, maybe put him in some linebacker packages, something that, you know, we wanted Landon Collins to do when Collins was here. Maybe, you know, you know, put uh, McKinney in linebacker packages and have uh, Peppers flex out his coverage muscles a little bit or have uh, Peppers blitzing, maybe have both of them blitz blitzing and the quarterback doesn't know which one is coming to him and then boom, it's both of them coming to him. I don't know what it's going to be, but I'm excited because I, I can't stop thinking about the possibilities that Peppers could be used and the many different ways he could possibly be used in this uh, versatile system that the Giants are implementing. Or I, I guess I should say that they claim they're implementing. We don't know yet, right? We don't know yet. But without a doubt, I expect Peppers to have a better season because he's he's a good safety, no matter which way you look at it. Um, For the Giants, he, had, uh, he was the second in tackles with us for the first 11 games where he had 71 tackles, 47 of them were solo. One less than Antoine Bethea, who, despite being a terrible safety for the Giants, did have a like a good amount of tackles. But he suffered a fractured transverse process and his kickoff return of a season in Chicago, and he was placed on injury reserve on December 10th. That was a mouthful. Uh, Peppers did get injured, but um, I still think he's healthier than, in than Ingram. It's not exactly like Jabril has an injury history with the Giants. He, he still finished fourth on the team with 76 tackles and led the Giants with three forced fumbles. So right away, you could see he was still a good safety. And this fifth year option, I, I just see it as actually extending a player that they want to keep. Um, I think we're going to extend Jabril Peppers down the line in the future, unless for some reason uh, the Giants see somebody, or I guess I should say Joe Judge sees another strong safety out there that is better than Peppers and he's fine with letting him walk. But I think Peppers is on the team to stay. I would love for him to stay. I would love for him to be a building block. But that's the two guys that we picked up their fifth year options on. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, are you like me? Do you think the Ingram thing is purely strategic so we could either trade, cut him, deal him to some other team? Or do you think it's what I think the Peppers one is? And that both of them are just to keep the guys on here because they're both going to be building blocks for the future. Let me know down below. I'm out. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Put your comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. Yer.